Hey guys, it's Kimberly, and on this episode of AGF Stitch, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this wonderful quilt. It's called a dory, and it looks super hard, but I'm gonna simplify it and break it down totally easy. The only special ruler you need is the Spider Webs Creative Grids Ruler and the free pattern. You can find the free pattern in the link below and all the supplies you need. Today we're gonna to be using the Love Story Collection by Art Gallery Fabrics, and it's just beautiful. You're gonna love this, so let's get started. Our first step in making this block is to make strip sets. I'm using Aurifil Color 2000. It's gonna blend really nicely with your quilt. Your first step is to make strip sets. You're gonna take your fabric B, C, and D and sew those together. Now this quilt, if you look at the block, there's a lot of seams. So if you press open, you're gonna get a more beautiful block that's gonna lay flatter. It's gonna be easier for your long arm quilter to quilt it. And when I'm pressing, when I'm using seams that are pressed open because your seam is weaker, I'm gonna do like a 1.8 stitch, which, you know, that's a lot tighter, but it's gonna give you a better result when you're pressing open, less likely to come apart. So you're gonna make six of these. Then you're gonna take your spider rub ruler by Creative Grids. You're gonna line up the six inch line on the bottom and the tip at the top, and you're gonna cut. Now what I do when I'm cutting with this ruler is I just place my hand exactly really flat and I do cut towards myself. I've been quilting a long time so I just do it. You can get, you're gonna go all the way across. And remember the six inch line at the bottom, the black tip at the top, your little triangle tip is going to hang over and you're gonna cut. And you'll see that when you do this, you're getting two different looks. You're gonna make 36 of each and you're just gonna keep cutting all your strip sets until you have 36 of each. And I'm just gonna kinda keep them stacked while I'm cutting. Now we're going to be making our navy strip set. This is going to be made with E, F, and G. This time you're going to make seven strip sets instead of six. And again, you're going to press open and use that tight stitch length. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to make 42 this time. So just start all the way on the left. Line your six up six inch on the bottom, the tip on the top, and just cut until you have 42 of each. So the next step is going to be cutting the final pieces for our block and you're gonna take your fabric A squares and then put it on the bias. Take the tip of your spider web ruler and put it right on the top. And then the center line just needs to go down. So you've got a line going all the way across. And you're gonna make 72 of these triangles and you're gonna throw these away. So to get the look of the quilt behind you, we're gonna make four different blocks. Our first one is going to look like this. Each of the blocks has six pieces. So I'm gonna show you how to do the first half. You're gonna put your cream right sides together, but the very the tip, you're gonna extend a quarter inch off of this unit, and then you're gonna have a little bit of a gap here, and that's totally fine, because we're gonna be trimming the block down. Now this is on the bias, so the more, pin, the more pins you use, the easier it's gonna be once you get to your sewing machine. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to the sewing machine, we're gonna be using um, an RFL thread, and again, since we're gonna be pressing open, we're still gonna keep that seam at 1.8. And I'm gonna stop, start at the outside and I'm gonna go all the way to the tip 
because this has got more bulk that's why you want to start here if you start here it's going to be harder because you've got less bulk and you're on the bias so start at this end and let's stitch down so now we're going to press first set your seam just gently place your iron press to one side I use seam and then I'm going to press open. So I find that if you set your seam, press to one side and then press open, you're going to get a better result. You might burn yourself a little bit, but I feel like it gives more accuracy. So you've got that. Now we're going to add our next piece. And when you add this piece, you can see this little red triangle is sticking out. You want to line up this there because that's still you're basically going over a quarter inch again so that you get that seam pin a lot because again you're on the bias and then we're gonna go sew this and we'll be right back so now you're gonna see you have little dog ears you're just gonna clip them clip that one again set your seam Press to one side, then press open. So this is the first half of your block. We went ahead and sewed the other half the same exact way. And now to put this block together, I've got some tips for you. You're going to, I call it poke a pin. You're going to put a pin in the very center of this point. And then you're going to put a pin in the next point. And then you're just going to, I leave it there. And then I put pins on the other side of it. Then I remove it. And then on each of these, you just open it and look and make sure that your seams are lining up. So you're gonna put a pin at each seam, even at the bottom. And then we're gonna just sew that with a quarter inch seam. And then we'll press that open. And again, this is all bias, so it's best to use lots of pins. So let's go sew this final seam. So we're going to just press to set our seam, press to one side. Press open. And then I'm just going to press gently on the top. And you can see that all my seams are lining up because I pinned. Now we need to trim this down to 8.75. So I'm just gonna kind of look at my ruler. I've got a nine, nine inch, a nine and a half inch square ruler. And I'm just gonna be trimming a little bit off each side. So I just kind of eyeball it. The main thing that you want is this 45 degree line right in the center and we're just going to be trimming a little bit off each side as long as you trim about the same amount off each side when you put the final block together it'll, it'll work so I'm going to do that flip the block and then trim to 8.75 and I love when we make blocks that you trim down because you're getting a much more accurate um, 
results. So let's move to the next step. Now this is the block that we just made. We're gonna make a total of 10, and then we're gonna be making 10 of these blocks, eight and eight. And you just wanna follow your pattern, go slow. You can see our blocks are nice and flat. We have used starch throughout, Use lots of pins for the bias, but you can see that you can do it, and this quilt was actually made in a weekend, so it can be done. I know it's looking really hard, but just keep trucking along, and let's move to our final blocks. So these are our final blocks, and as you can see, each of the blocks has four little mini blocks that we just made that you place together. You're gonna make five of this one and four of this one, and you can see how it's forming this beautiful circle and when you put them together, it just forms this beautiful, even more circles. Now all your hard part is really done. Now all you have to do is put your nine blocks together. You're gonna assemble them. This is a great thing to do with a design wall or on the floor. Definitely lay it all out before you start so that you don't get your, your, you know, your fabrics in the wrong spot. And you're gonna sew together three rows of three blocks. Sew that together and your quilt is finished. I can't wait to see all of your Adori quilts. Definitely share them with us on social media and join us next time for our next AGF episode.